I want you to stop typing on garbage. Hey. And I've got just the thing to make it happen. With some help from our labs team and my new robot friend here, I intend to make sure that you never get fooled by flashy marketing again. It presses, it stresses, it undresses. Hey, not while the camera's on you. Yep. Cave here is programmed to do all sorts of useful things, but most importantly, he's designed to give you some of the most accurate and precise keyboard data on the market. So no manufacturer can get away with BSing their product specs ever again. Be afraid, keyboard makers. Be very afraid. Afraid of this segue to our sponsor, Zoho One. Zoho One brings together sales, marketing, finance, analytics, and support in a single unified platform to run your entire business. Try Zoho One today for 30 days using the link down below. When your Corsair K70 Pro or Logitech G915 rolls off the production line, it goes through a series of QC or quality control checks to make sure that every little piece of it is within the manufacturer's specified tolerances. Do the switches work? Do they chatter? Does the RGB light? Does the chassis line up? Is the cable freight? Are the logos upside down or off center? All of these things and more are checked before your keyboard goes into the box, out the door, and finally, lands on your desk. But a quality controlled product is not necessarily a quality product. Brands love to use words like precise, but then stay conveniently quiet when you ask for details. How precise? What is your specified error tolerance? I mean, think about it. If the force to push down W and S, let's say, was allowed to be plus or minus 10%, the difference could be as much as 20% between them. Is that gonna cost you a critical hit? What if you were to push the spacebar here instead of here? Will it feel the same? Will it work at all? With the Flexiv Ryzen 4S, we intend to find out. It's got seven degrees of freedom, can move payloads as heavy as three and a half kilograms, and can reach over 780 millimeters. We've spent months getting this guy up and running to a degree that we deem satisfactory to start sharing the data with you. Okay, second Jake, show me what you got. Is Cherry MX's plus minus 10% accurate? What, what, uh, what actually works so far? Well, we haven't actually started Cherry MX, but on this particular keyboard, what we've done is we've taken it, we've placed it into the build area and tightened these little screws up against oh, it so that way it doesn't move. It is moving. That's Well, only if you push it. The robot's not gonna move it. What we're doing is we're taking the computer vision okay. and we're actually taking a series of different frames. We're compositing those over top of each other after we do edge detection. So we can actually see where each of the keys are. So then, we can tell the size of the key, the shape exactly. of the key. Exactly, yep. Okay. So once that's done, the robot will move down onto the center point of each key press down, measure the force as it travels, and then measure it as it releases as well. Doing this gives us not only the force graph for the switches being used in the board, but also it lets us know if any of the switches are out of spec. But how accurate slash precise is it? What is this exactly? It looks a little suggestive. This is Antoine's handiwork. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my first choice. Okay. Uh, what this is, this is a 3D printed finger. Uh, and effectively, it's a finger. Yeah, it's a finger for sure. PG show. This is actually connected to the force load cell built into the robot. Oh. So when we press down, we're actually able to record the precision at 0.001 Newton. So really, really fine detail. Oh, we're talking... so this is way better than what we had during our like last tour where we had like a prototype thing of this. Oh, way, way better. Yeah, we replaced the previous system because the gantry system that we had actually has issues with uh, moving and vibration. This is really stable with a high amount of repeatability which means that we're not gonna run into those issues and dirty our data. We want things to be clean, Linus. Uh, is it supposed to be doing things? Like, were we gonna start it at some point? Yeah, as soon as as soon as soon we have a cue, Antoine can hit E and it'll start moving. Oh, yeah, 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 it, do it. It will move fast. Whoa, hey, whoa, how you doing? Okay, well, yeah, do, do the thing. I mean, is it, did you stop it? No, he didn't, but we moved the oh. keyboard, that's all. Is this one of those things where you like get the demo ready for the CEO and then the CEO leaves and it didn't actually, it wasn't actually working yet? Oh, of course, this is all pre-programmed and then you move the keyboard. It took an image of the area uh -huh. and detected where the keys were yeah. and then we moved the keyboard. Yeah, I see. So obviously it hasn't, can't see it, well, can it's too close. Can we do a new image? Yeah, we can do a new image. Oh, I guess if I'm like bumping this in the middle of the thing, that ruins everything. Right? Oh yeah, we're not gonna use this data for any publishing. Yeah, this is cool. just to show you and to show Linus. 
What you're seeing here is an HSV version of the camera image, and this is for calibration purposes. So if the camera gets bumped or moves, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find these four points here, and we're gonna do a de-skew on the image to make sure that we're looking at a level field. So once we've done that, it's gonna take the 50 frames of video, run the edge detection on each of them, and then composite those together. And that way, if there's any autofocus issues, we're able to bypass that. Uh, how long does that take? It's done. Right now, it's not 100% perfect, but we have a new computer vision hire who, it's her specialty right. to make things like this work. We're working on it, and actually, we're looking at moving away from computer vision to a 3D laser uh, profiler. So and wait, that we hired a person to do this, and then immediately they're out of a job? No. 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 Good. She's actually, she's a machine learning and computer vision specialist. Okay. The same skill set applies to the 3D image that we're gonna get okay. from the profiler. Okay, and but it's, like it's a laser thing. It's a laser. With lasers. It's with lasers. Okay. Yeah, no sharks, but lasers. Oh, okay, I was and gonna ask, whatever it's attached to, can we name it shark? What the 3D laser profile is gonna do is really clean up the image. We don't have to worry about lighting. We don't have to worry about uh, changes in the environment. And because it's just looking at the height map, all of the gaps between each of the keys presents a huge distinct drop, right. meaning that we're going to get every key every time. Whereas right now we've got we get shadows, we've got, I guess, ah, oh, that's the point of this. This is the Light Blocker 9000 and they did not want to have this on here for the shoot because it looks janky, but what we had to do was put this on here to get even this good of an image because once you change your lighting and have, you know, a shadow like this, it's really easy to get an extra key detected on that line. What we do have is the ability for the person running the test to actually remove and add boxes as they need to. After a full test run of 100 some odd switches, Cave is gonna tell us with certainty how many of them actuate or send a signal to your PC, whether they actuate early or late compared to the spec, whether the travel distance being reported by the manufacturer is accurate, if the bump in a tactile switch is where they say it is, and these might sound like very boring little details to you, but they're the kind of thing that you don't realize is a problem until you are thighs deep in a gaming or writing session and you keep accidentally freaking trampling that line. Any error, from our point of view, should be the fault of the user and not of the peripheral. And small deviations like this can make a huge difference when muscle memory is at play. Do you guys remember this viral video showing people tripping on the 36th Street subway station in New York? That stair was less than an inch out of spec. That's less than 15%. Of course, this only helps us if we can test every keyboard. Can we do that? Oh buddy, let me tell you, right now, we're able to test this keyboard in 30 minutes. And I know a few places we can actually find time savings. I think we can get it down to 25. I can see one place we could probably save some time. Like if we have that laser depth map, we probably wouldn't need to start like a full exactly. inch over the key and then go down slowly. And I guess the slowness is so that we get nice clean readings That's off exactly of it. it. So right now we're actually going to a fixed height that is higher than any known keyboard we've found. Right, okay. And that way we know we're never gonna crash into it because- That would be bad. It would be very bad. Like it's an expensive go, robot. You'd go right through the keyboard and probably damage the robot. Tell me something though. No user would ever press a key like that. So after we hit everything slowly, have we considered going back and doing a fast hit? and looking at what that looks like. We have, we've also actually considered hitting the corners as well for checking for key binding. I've just been told that our new procurement hire has 150 keyboards on order already, with our goal being to test 200 by the end of this year, starting with the big names like Logitech, Corsair, and Razer, then moving on to the other top selling keyboards on Amazon. But that only tells us about the field. What about latency or other concerns like repairability? What this test rig does is measuring uh, the total system latency. So from the time you click on the keyboard to the time you have a response oh, on the display. Like a muzzle flash. To automate this process, we've got a solenoid right here that presses the key for us. Then once the key is pressed, the signal goes to two places. It goes to this NVIDIA LDAT detector box and it goes to the accompanying software on the PC. By measuring the difference in time between the signal reaching here and the muzzle flash appearing here, we can find out how long it takes between pressing a key on your keyboard and your character moving on screen. This kind of real world testing is really important because it allows us to quantify the importance of, say, high polling rates in keyboards. 
It'll also help us discover if there's more to latency than just the polling rate. It's pretty rudimentary for now, and what we want to do in the longer term is set up a USB breakout circuit that's tied to a logic analyzer, then watch the USB packet as it crosses the wire, but that's going to take a little bit of time. For those of you wondering, by the way, for Bluetooth, we'll just be using a dongle. One question I have about this is right now we're using a 360 hertz monitor, which is the fastest available for now. But as faster monitors become available, will that make our old data no longer applicable if we switch and use, say, a 500 hertz monitor? The old data will still be relevant because my goal is to have the end-to-end -end latency and still subtracting the system, so just the PC and the display from the keyboard latency, so you would have just the keyboard latency. Okay. So this part would still make sense in the long run. Right. How are we going to remove the display latency from the keyboard latency? Luckily, NVIDIA um, in their LDAT system give us the, the PC latency. So we just take that value, subtract it. Oh, okay. This being said, I'm not a big fan of that method. That's why we are working on, on the USB breaker and right. logic analyzer so to have the just, in flight. Just, yeah, just a keyboard. The idea is to have both value, a real world value, sure. and a theoretical value. And the reason that that matters is because you might see a theoretical value that's half the time of another keyboard, but in terms of the difference that it's going to make to an actual game, might be functionally zero because that makes up such a small portion of the total latency that it's just negligible. For example, you can have a keyboard that is one millisecond um, as a latency of one millisecond or two milliseconds seems like a lot, like two times more. But when you take the full end-to-end -end latency, it might be the difference between 15 and 60 milliseconds. How the hell are you going to test 200 keyboards by the end of this That's year? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful question. Because it's going to be know. you, right? So far, it's just me. Of course, there's a lot more to evaluating a keyboard than just collecting data about the key switches and the latency. One of the other big concerns in the lab is repairability. For instance, how easy is it to access the screws? Do you have to pull off little rubber feet that you then can't re-adhere? Once we have our website up and running, more on that later, we aim to list all the screw types and tools required, whether or not there are plastic clips holding pieces together, any extra steps you might need to get it apart, and tear down pictures so you can see for yourself what's inside the board you're buying. We'll also be giving points for whether or not boards have hot swappable PCBs for switch replacements and detachable cables, because not having to solder in order to repair your keyboard makes it much easier for regular users to keep their electronics out of the landfill. We also want to use our articles to contextualize this information. I mean, it's all fine and good to see a key switch actuation force graph, but how does it feel? Our aim is to include comparisons then against popular switches and keyboards to help set you in the right direction. Do you like the feel of MX Blues, but want something quieter? Do you like the actuation force of your Amazon Basics keyboard, but wish it felt less mushy and looked nicer? We've still got a long way to go. We already talked about moving to a high-speed 3D laser profiler system instead of a camera so that we can get 3D images of each board, and the website isn't anywhere close to being ready. While we do have several test plans drafted, there are still a lot of questions to answer around ergonomics and dimensions, and key rollover and ghosting, connectivity, bundle and packaging, software, firmware, backlighting, extra controls, and of course, sound. These are all things we haven't even touched on today, but we do have plans in the works for them, so stay tuned. The ultimate goal is to create an information repository with a detailed breakdown of test results, pictures from every angle, maybe a rubric scoring system. I'll be arguing hard against it, but it might be unavoidable. And most importantly to all the enthusiasts out there, a sound library where you can listen to each keyboard in its stock configuration. One of the biggest problems with keyboard audio tests online is a lack of consistency, which we hope to solve by using the same space and desk materials, namely DeskPad from LTTstore.com, as well as the same microphone so that you get the closest sound possible to hearing it in person. Lofty goals indeed, and as you can see, we're not there yet, but you know who is there? Our sponsor. Our sponsor's always there. ASUS! ASUS's long-awaited GeForce RTX 4000 series graphics cards are finally here, so you'll be able to get your hands on their top-tier GeForce RTX 4090, 4080 16GB, and 4080 12GB. These cards boast plenty of CUDA cores, heaps of video memory, and have all the GeForce RTX features to make sure your build is the best of the best. Their 4090 ROG Strix offers a new patented vapor chamber with a milled heat spreader for lower GPU temps and a massive fin array that's optimized for airflow from three Axial Tech fans 
And their 4090 Tough Gaming has dual ball bearing fans that last up to twice as long as conventional designs. It also has capacitors rated for 20,000 hours at 105 degrees Celsius for added GPU power rail durability, and a metal exoskeleton that adds structural rigidity and vents to increase heat dissipation. Click the link below and learn more about ASUS's line of RTX 4000 series GPUs today. If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe check out our 80 person studio tour. There are a lot of people working here now. Actually, there's like four more since then. It's kind of out of control.